And welcome to another edition of Cooking with Lily and Generoso. I am Generoso. I'm Lily. And we are going to make something I haven't made in this house in quite a while. It's polenta con spinaci fritta. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually show you how to make polenta, which you can then use in a variety of ways. And then we're going to take that polenta and make it with spinach in, uh, in a fashion I think your family's really going to enjoy. So fundamentally, we're going to have to show you the ingredients first. Let's start off. We're going to need a couple of pie tins, some measuring cups. We don't normally measure, but let's measure out for this. Polenta can be a little tricky. About mm, seven cloves of garlic, a whisk, a good sharp knife, a half a stick of butter, a half a pound of whole milk mozzarella, nice about 16 ounces of fresh spinach, cornmeal. That's what polenta is. Don't feel like you have to go to some special section of an Italian grocery store to find polenta mix. There is instant polenta, which you just add water, mix, and it comes out perfectly. We're going to take it from the root here. Some olive oil, black pepper, sea salt. And uh, as far as other things, you'll need the one pot to make the polenta and then eventually make the spinach. Being the fact that after we make the polenta, we're going to have to let it cool for about two hours. Uh, we could just use the one pot. No need to dirty two pots because that's more crap you don't need to deal with. So we'll be right back to show you the first step and uh, we'll make our polenta together. And there we go. Water's boiling. How much water? Six cups of water. I measured this time. I'm good that way. So now, fundamental to, to doing polenta is that if I add the two cups of polenta I'm supposed to add to this boiling water all at once, you get clumps, lots and lots of clumps, and that's not fun. So what we're progressively going to do is we're going to give it two cups of polenta, and just cornmeal. We're not going to dump it all at once. What we're going to do is we're going to take our one cup of measurement, and we're going to add it like this. Keep stirring it. And do it progressively. Take your time. Think of it almost the same way you treat risotto, right? You don't want to just dump all the risotto there. Hopefully it gets some of the flavor. Fundamental to this, again, is that you do not want the polenta clumping. So now we're going to add this cup of polenta and then another cup of polenta the exact same way over about 20-25 minutes until we start to see the mixture develop a thickness. Again, be nice and slow and stir thoroughly and we'll be back in just a bit to show you what polenta looks like in about 20-25 minutes. Welcome back. So now we've added our first cup of polenta. As you can see, it's thickening up rather nicely. No clumps, nice and consistent. So after the first cup is when I usually add our big lump of butter. Remember, everything is healthier and better with butter. And we're also going to add a copious amount of sea salt. I'm going to say about a tablespoon. And keep stirring. Remember, stir, keep stirring. Stirring is the only way to keep the lumps out. And now we're going to begin the process of adding the second cup of polenta. And we'll be back when, when it's done. So after about 25 minutes of aggressive stirring, this is the consistency of the polenta. It's fluffy and happy, and it's not lumpy at all. So now this beautiful creamy polenta, we're going to put into these pie pans. But as polenta likes to be sticky, 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 we're going to put down a copious amount of olive oil. Use your hand. Get it in there. Really do the sides of your pie pans. Now these pie pans are not going into the oven. No, 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 no. The nice thing about polenta is when it gets firm, it does it all by itself. So we're gonna take our polenta and we're gonna scoop out a goodly amount and start to put it in our pie pans. And we're gonna smooth them out so there's about like, I'd say three quarters of an inch of polenta on the bottom of each pie pan. The eventual goal is refrigeration. And uh, they're gonna refrigerate for about two hours before they're in any kind of condition to be moved to the next step. So I'm gonna keep 
putting this polenta in the pie pan. I'm going to smooth them out, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. So we have taken our polenta out of the pot, poured it into our pie pans, nice and even. They're about three quarters of an inch tall inside each pie pan. We're now going to cover them, and we're going to put them in the refrigerator. Now, ideally, you want to do it overnight, um, because the longer it is, the firmer it gets, and the easier it is to handle. Being that we'd like to eat sometime this evening, uh, we're only going to keep them in there for two hours. But don't, don't honestly refrigerate them for less than two hours and expect to cut them and get something that's manageable. So we're going to put them in the fridge, keep them at least, I'm going to keep them for about two and a half hours, and then we're going to go to the next step. But while we're waiting for them to cool down, we're going to work on the topping, uh, and that'll be next. So our wonderful polenta has been cooling in the fridge for quite a while. It's about 10 minutes before we're going to take it out, so we're going to prepare the topping. Uh, what I've done is I've actually minced up the mozzarella, and I've minced up the garlic. I have the cuisinart all cleaned up and ready for the next assault. I'm going to cover the bottom in olive oil, make it get nice and hot, and then our beautiful clean spinach will be added to this pot in a little tiny bit, but once the oil actually gets warm enough to go, we're going to take our garlic and we're going to add that. And again, remember, garlic browns very quickly, so be attentive to it while you're actually uh, getting it ready to go. Let's spread it out a little bit here. A nice smell filling our little tiny Los Angeles kitchen. As it starts to brown, we're going to add our spinach and a little tiny bit of Tuscan wine, just a tiny bit, and it's going to add some beautiful flavor, some salt, some pepper, and then we're going to put that to the side um, and get ready to fry up our polenta slices. So as you see, the garlic is a little bit away from, uh, from browning up. Once it browns, we're going to add our spinach, then we're going to add about Honestly, maybe a half a cup of the Tuscan wine, about a teaspoon of salt and pepper. Put that together, I'll set it apart, and I'll show you what that looks like before we get to the frying stage. By the way, if you watched the last piece and you were like, what, red wine? I don't remember red wine. Lily brought up the fact that I didn't have red wine as one of my ingredients. You don't need it necessarily. If you do the spinach, which is the olive oil, salt and pepper, and garlic, you're fine. I add a little bit of Tuscan wine to give it more character. That is completely optional. So if, if you're making this recipe and you're like, damn it, we have no wine, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. So now we've taken our polenta out of the fridge. It is nice and cold, and most importantly, it is firm. So I've taken my giant frying pan, put a copious amount of olive oil, and now we are about to fry. I've cut the polenta into pie-shaped pieces that I will try to lift out of the pan. That first piece is always the pain, but it will come out, I promise you. So we're going to take our polenta, and now it'll be easy, and we're going to put it in the pan to fry. Again, the oil is important. Polenta likes to stick, so be good with it. Also, I want to make this right because this is Lily's lunch for tomorrow besides our late night snack. A very deadly late night snack. We'll be more careful in the future. Lunch. We'll see. The polenta at this juncture feels very thick and almost clay like when you take it out. And it will fry. And what two of those pieces are not moving. They're not dead. They just need more love. So now let's move them again. Polenta is some sticky business. So we're going to continue. We're going to fry them on both sides. And then we're going to put our mozzarella on, and then our spinach garnish, we'll see you then. So, we have fried our wonderful polenta slices on both sides. They're browning a little bit, and they have really, really nice color. What we're now going to do is we're going to get some of the mozzarella. Don't go crazy with the mozzarella. Add a little bit in the middle to each. And, again, this is a pizza. We want the mozzarella to be an accent, not the core of our polenta. Now a little bit here, a little bit here. I love mozzarella. I know you do. And a little bit here. Don't let the piece get away. And maybe just a little tiny bit more here. Okay. Grab that messy piece. So now we're gonna turn off our heat. 
we're going to cover and let that sit for about five to seven minutes until the mozzarella melts down and then we're going to go to our last stage of our polenta con spinach fruit. It's been about seven minutes. Our mutz I know Lily is so excited. Our mozzarella is melted. Don't mind my fingers, baby. And we're going to put a couple pieces on plate. Plating these as gently as I can. You know, they're firm, but they're still a little bit on the fragile side. And I've taken a couple of these. We're going to take some of our still very, very warm spinach. And we're going to apply it gently. That piece is not going on. Just a little tiny bit more. And there you have it, polenta, polenta frito con spinach. I hope you like it.